Genesis chapter 3, verse 9. The Bible reads here, And the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? So God knows obviously where Adam is. You know the story, Adam sinned against God and he's hiding. But God gave that question to convict Adam. Where are you? Well, where is Adam? Hiding from sin? Where is Adam? A place where he should not be. What's Adam doing? He's ashamed. That question, where art thou, makes you think about where are you right now? And then I'm going to combine that with Job 38 and freely preach off a message at verse 4. God repeated that same question to Job, but more specifically, where was thou when I laid the foundations of the earth? I want to combine these two verses together and ask you a question that when God laid the foundations, the first works, the principles of what a basic Christian should be, where were you all that time? For years you've attended our church. For years professed to be a safe Christian, professed to be one of us. But were you really there? You know what's that? I strongly believe this. There are independent, fundamental Baptist churches that consist of members who attend there for years and still not saved. I believe there are some people that will be left behind at the rapture, even though they're in a saved, independent, fundamental Baptist church. And let's include the Bible believers there. You might say, how is that possible? It is possible because people, they just come to church because they just come to church but they don't know about the foundations, the basics. I don't want you to be that person. God forbid the rapture called right now, and there are some of you left behind at the rapture, and you're like, but I sang that hymn along with them about seeing Jesus face to face, being raptured. I don't understand why. See, that's why it's important that you know about the foundations, Amen. the basics. Amen. I want to cover that today. The title of my message is, Where Art Thou? Where Art Thou? Let's pray. Amen. Father, please fill within me the power of your Holy Spirit and wisdom. It's important that this church does not grow so much to a point where its foundation is weak and it shatters. Uh, help me to preach with the filling power, the cleansing of your blood, and most importantly, just all you. Speak to these people's hearts. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, this will apply to everybody. You must understand this applies to everybody, this sermon. Because even if a person has grown so much in Bible-believing doctrine and practice, they can forget the basic foundations. Because they get caught up with so much deep stuff, heavy things, hardcore practices for Jesus, that they forget the basic. So this preaching will apply to everybody. My first point, and we're going to look at a lot of scriptures today to prove the foundations. Let's look at Hebrews 6. Hebrews chapter 6. The first foundation is your salvation. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. Woo. Salvation and baptism. Amen. Salvation and water baptism. Amen. Water baptism is not the same as salvation. Glory. Please get that. Yeah. 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 Get it that water baptism is not the same as salvation. Yeah. However, God takes it as obvious common sense that as soon as you get saved, you should get baptized immediately afterwards. Amen. So that's why you will sometimes see the baptism and salvation very close uh, within the context of the verse together. Now, it will distinguish the two, but it will show the, how baptism was very immediate after salvation. And that's a very basic it's a basic that you must be water baptized if you get saved. And if, you're gonna, and if you're going to attend this church, it's a basic that every single person should be saved from hell. Before you come down on this altar and get right with God, let me tell you this, you should get saved first. Oh, yeah. Amen. God forbid it would be very sad that some of you are still not saved. That's why it's important to get saved. We have a thing in this church called confirming salvation or assurance assurance of salvation. You might say, what is that? That's where if you have a testimony about your salvation that you're kind of iffy or you're not sure, we're not accusing you as being lost, 
but it's good to make sure. Yeah. So then, I'm going to do it right there and then with you with showing you the gospel once more yeah. and then getting you to do the sinner's prayer. And then after that, we can mark it down that this was the date and we confirmed your salvation here. Amen. You got to ask yourself this, okay? If you're coming to this church, please seriously ask yourself this question. When did you get saved? Well, I know I got saved when. Is it like a swimming in your head belief? I don't believe in that garbage where people are saying, you know, it's just belief only and nothing like that. And some kind of mental thing that's swimming and you can't pinpoint a time and a place. I don't believe in that. You have to, if you believe on Christ for your salvation, when you do that sinner's prayer, it's like a verbal evidence that shows that, hey, I know for certain this was a time and place. Why? Because I said it, man. Not just some kind of feelings or emotion or thoughts that were swimming. And I wasn't sure when exactly at what point I got saved. When you said it out of your mouth, it makes it even more clear after that. Amen. So that's why it's important to do confirmation of salvation, assurance of salvation. Can you tell me if, uh, can you honestly tell me how you got saved? Can you give me the specifics? Think hard. When? Amen. If you're struggling and you're thinking, oh, I think it was or when it was, then see, it was something that you just kept in, in you and then it was just swimming in your mind and your heart all that time, but you never made it clear. Amen. You never made a, some specific clear point. That's why it's important that you do that. That's why we do confirming of salvation. You might say, why is that important? Because I'm saved, I'm going to heaven. Okay, you might be, but what if you're not? What if it was just something that you thought you were always saved, but you never did? That's why it's so important to do, make sure right then and there. Amen. That's why it's so important to do that, not just know. Why? Because there's a tons of religions out there that they think and they know that they're saved and going to heaven. That's why it's so important to review, all right? I'm not trying to make you doubt your salvation or, you know, judge you that you're lost and you're going to hell. Look, if you tell me that you're saved and then you give a testimony, hey, that's fine, okay? I'm going to take your word for it. People I come across the streets, they say they're saved. They give the right answer. I'll take their word for it, okay? I'm not going to interrogate their life and then find out everything. Church membership is a little different process, but generally with people, I don't accuse them as lost, okay? I get that. But the thing is, is that if you want to grow in the Lord and you're already reaching up to here, God forbid you never got saved to begin with. I believe in making sure of your salvation. It's very important to do that. Why? Because we're talking about heaven or hell. Imagine, let me open your eyes a bit. Imagine you watched this online this entire time for years. You attended this church for years, fellowshiped with us, rejoiced with us, and knew all the stuff with us. And then you thought at the judgment seat of Christ when you die, that you go at the judgment seat of Christ and God's going to give you your rewards. And God said, all of that that you did for the church is a waste of time. Wow. This ain't the judgment seat of Christ. This is a great white throne judgment. Wow. You never, with a repentant and believing heart, confess to my son for salvation, you're going to burn in hell for eternity. Wow. Imagine all this time you wasted. Mm -hmm. That's sad, isn't it? That's why it's important to make sure of your salvation. Yeah. The Bible says in Hebrews chapter six, 6, verse 1, Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. See, Paul's saying, let's move onward. Let's not do it again. Why? Because this should be common sense that a foundation's already laid and we can move on. The foundation of what? Faith toward God. Faith. Are you saved by grace through faith? Amen. Are you sure? If you're not sure, look, today would be a great time to get Amen. saved. Amen. Look, we're not going to judge you. All right? We'd be happy. We'd be happy you made sure of your salvation. Okay? It's very important to do that. It's very important to do that. You might say, why is it good to make sure of my salvation? Because later on, you might doubt. Yeah. You might go, did I really get saved? Especially when you're close to deathbed, you start doubting. Yeah. And you go, did I really receive Christ? Did I really do that right? Did I go through the gospel right? You know, you might as well make sure now. Amen. 
mark it down, you know, write it on a piece of paper or something, have a couple witnesses maybe or something like that. That way in the future, you can remind yourself, no, I remember, I remember, I have the details, the witnesses written it out, date what? Date the, uh, April 2022, <laughs> yeah, I know I've been saved. You know, it's important to make sure of your salvation. That way you don't doubt in the future. It's to assure you. And the Bible says over here at verse 2 of the doctrine of baptisms. See, baptism is a basic. If you get saved in the Lord Jesus Christ, you know what you should be doing? You should go, hey, I want to get baptized as soon as possible. When's the date and the time that you can do it, Pastor? I'll baptize you. Of course I want you to get baptized. Why? Because it's a command from our Lord. Yeah. I'm not hyper dispensational. Jesus says, go ye unto all the world and baptize them. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. That's a basic. You have to get baptized immediately when you get saved. Why? Because it's a shameful thing that you are winning souls to salvation and you never got baptized. Whoa. That's pretty shameful. Whoa. You have to understand that water baptism is a basic command from scripture Amen. why because you know what baptism does that verbal confirmation you do when you do the sinner's prayer it assures you actually it assures you but baptism is a evidence to show off to everybody a testimony that hey i'm one of you guys i already got saved in the lord jesus christ received him for salvation that's why i'm getting water baptized to show you what i did i what died buried resurrected when i received christ for salvation and that's that verb and that's that picture that evidence that you show to the people that's why it's important to get water baptized that's why there are so many cults who think bap water baptism is the same as salvation you see how they look very close but they're actually still very different Salvation is salvation, okay? A repentant, believing heart where you confess to Christ for salvation. That is different from water baptism, which is a picture, a picture. The Bible says figure, okay, at First Peter. That should be plain enough. It should be a picture of your salvation. Let's look at Hebrews chapter 6 again. The second thing I want to cover that's also a foundation his doctrine, his doctrine. Think about it, man. Imagine that you laughed with us, fellowshiped with us, got on the altar, got right with God, studying doctrine and writing down materials, but you are never saved. Can't you hear God asking you, where were you when I laid the foundations? Adam, Adam, where art thou? Oh, I'm saved. I'm already here, Father. No, I don't see you. I never knew you. Depart from me that work iniquity. Mm -hmm. Didn't you know the Bible says in Matthew 7, there are people who think they're saved. And they said, Lord, we cast out devils. We done miracles. And we were serving you in the church ministry. And God said, I never knew you. Depart from me. Burn in hell. Yes, I believe those kind of so-called Christians exist. Why? Because they never made sure of their salvation. They never thought about salvation. They just assumed. It's important to make sure of your salvation. In chapter 6, Hebrews chapter 6, what is a part of the foundation? It says in verse 2, of the doctrine of what? Baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. And yeah, we're going to keep doing that if God permits. This church will keep going on in defending right doctrine. Amen. Notice that all of that is grouped into with doctrines, yeah. right? Of the doctrine of what? All these things. Of the doctrine of all these things. So it's important that you understand doctrine. Uh, go to chapter 13, chapter 13, verse 9. Chapter 13, verse 9. <laughs> That's why we have our statement of faith to make it very thorough. Churches are scared to show their doctrine because they could care less what you believe as long as your church membership builds up and they get money for it. Look, I don't care about that. I care more about your soul. And because I want your soul to be fed and you growing and knowing right doctrine, guess what? 
I'm going to show you our statement of faith. You can find it on our website. Just go to our website, realbiblebelievers.com. You'll find a statement of faith section. Click on that. You'll see it. Amen. Thorough. All right. And it's not long either. Okay. You'll notice in that paper. Okay. It's like one and two. Th it's like one and two third page. It's not even reaching the second page. Okay. So that's our statement of faith. But we covered all the bases. We tried to show everything of what we believe in. But you know what's really sad is that people who attend this church, all of a sudden they'll start to recommend and refer wrong preachers and teachers who are Calvinists, who are not Bible believers, who correct the King James Bible. You got to realize, friend, that we don't actually support these ministers. Why? They don't believe in the same doctrine like we do. You might say, why don't you, uh, well, it's okay to refer to them. Then if I refer to them, I'm no different from them. We don't, we could care less about foundation. The foundation of a church is doctrine. Why? Because that distinguishes us from a Catholic, from a Muslim, from even, it even distinguishes us. Yes, it's true. I don't like this either, but it makes it very clear. It distinguishes me from a typical Presbyterian, Episcopalian, Methodist, and Lutheran, and Congregationalist, etc. Yeah. Amen, we're, so, we're so locked in doctrine that Baptists even split from Baptists. And I say, I'm not going to be part of the apostate Southern Baptist movement. I'm an independent Baptist. And it just goes so far that we're independent Baptists. They thought that they got their doctrine straight, but it's just fundamental doctrine. They don't go deeper. So that's why we come out with Bible believers. All right? Wow, why can't we all just get along? Because the reason why is, then where is the limit? Where's the boundary? Can we include everybody? No, you have to put a boundary somewhere. What's the boundary? God says... Doctrine! That's why it's important to understand your doctrine. We believe in dispensationalism. We believe that the King James Bible is the only perfect, pure Word of God. If you get those two doctrines down, especially with dispensational salvation, trust me, baby, you're going to find out that there's nothing out here pretty much. Now, I'm not acting like some cult leader with divine authority, I'm right and everybody's wrong. There are thousands of us Bible believers, all right? But don't think that all the thousands of Bible believers are gathered together in one big auditorium. They're all scattered around the world. And you're going to find out like Elijah, I'm the only one. But God says, no, there's 600. There's, there's more out there. But that's how it should appear as. Doctrine. Look at chapter 13 and verse uh, 9. Chapter 13 and verse 9. But then there are those who get carried away with such deep doctrine that they even forget the basic doctrine. Uh -huh. Didn't you know there's people out there who believes in, this is a crazy doctrine, about Genesis 6, so sons of God mingling with humans. Aliens are interbreeding with humans at Genesis 6 and they produce giants. Okay, do you know, didn't you know I get people who know that doctrine and th those are the same people who don't realize a basic doctrine that speaking in tongues is wrong. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Oh. There's something wrong right here in the head. That means you were so obsessed with the strange and abnormality stuff mm -hmm. that you forgot something basic in the Bible and yeah. clear. Hebrews chapter 13, verse 9, it says, Be not carried about with diverse and what? Strange doctrines. For it is a good thing that the heart be established with grace, not with meats, which have not profited them that have been occupied therein. Occupied therein. Click, click, next video. Oh, this is deep. Oh, this is awesome. And Oh, I didn't know that kind of stuff is in the Bible. You're looking for the strange, obscure stuff in between the lines within the scripture that's pretty rare rather than something that's clear, simple, and plain that, hey, get right with God. Yeah. Or, hey, speaking in tongues is wrong. Or, hey, my word is perfect. It has no corruption. Or, stay away from the world. Yeah. There are people who smoke. This is sad, man. You, you 
defend, justify smoking marijuana and at the same time, you're against and you dig up all the research about the vaccines and the mandatory restrictions, and you're so good at that. Pointing out the conspiracies, you know, something's in the water, that famous documentary going out now. You're so good at digging up all of that. And then you, and you still smoke marijuana when that's a basic that it should not be smoked in Christian churches. Shocking to me. Shocking. What kind of a generation we live in? Yeah, I'm talking about the school, the Bible Institute I went to. I can't tell you how many of these people. I mean, I met some of those people who justified wearing a tattoo. And I'm like, you've been here three years in PBI with me and you're justifying and defending a tattoo? These people believe in deep doctrines like dispensational salvation, pre-tribulation rapture, but they justify in wearing a tattoo. That's weird, man. Yeah, we need one by one, Randalls. Yes, that's a good thing we need that. You know why? There are some people who need to get back to the basics. basics. It's important we have that. Wow. There are, there's this one side of the coin who are so deep into doctrine and strange stuff that they get off of the basic foundational doctrine. And then there's this side who could care less about doctrine and they'll brag about fundamentals, fundamentals, but then they're not grounded in that foundation of growing in doctrine. You got these two extremes that just messed up churches nowadays. Look at 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Here you are working hard in the kitchen and then Helping out the church, saying, Pastor, I'm praying for you. Saying, thank you, Pastor, that's a wonderful sermon. But at the same time, you're watching different pastors who are not right in doctrine. At the same time, you're telling other people about, hey, this preacher and teacher is good when they don't teach right doctrine. At the same time, you don't even know dispensationalism. There are people who watched us for a long time they don't even know that I believe in a pre-tribulation rapture. You know that? Some people came in, they just got shocked that I believed in that. That's a, that's, you know why? They haven't studied doctrine. Doctrine. They weren't paying attention during Bible study. They weren't writing notes. They weren't studying doctrine. You don't want to be that person. You want to know what we believe, what we practice. And then there's this other extreme right here where yeah, I know all this deep stuff, Pastor. That was interesting. Let me show you something else that I learned too. Uh-huh. And I know, and they'll show this deep stuff that they observe, but they don't even know the basic doctrine. Right. And they, these are the same people who can't socially get along well with people. Mm-hmm. The basics in life. Hey, do you hear God speaking to you? Where... Where were you when I laid the foundations? Adam. Adam. Where art thou? Online. Oh, oh, oh. In church. Ha, ha, ha. Yes, I love you, brother, sister. I'm praying for you. And these guys don't even know a single doctrine or even basic. 2 Timothy 2, 19. 2 Timothy 2, 19. Another basic is separation from the world. Separation from the world. The Bible says, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure. Ah, God has a foundation and a sure thing. Having this seal, the Lord knoweth them that are His. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. It's very plain that a foundation is, hey, you're separated from sin. You're separated from the world and I know which one is mine. It's that apparent. I know which one is mine. Let me ask you a question. How can, how can it, we demonstrate where God can really know what belongs to him or people know this is a Christian, this is a world. If you're living in the same house 
with that opposite gender, like the other people in Silicon Valley and San Francisco Bay Area is, and there is fornication, and that the way you dress is the same thing like the world, how can people tell the difference? Wow. It's a foundation that, hey, I'm a Christian, you can tell. Oh, it's pretty obvious. It's pretty obvious. You know, people are so easy to point out, hey, that's a Jehovah Witness. Hey, that's a Mormon. They're so easy to point out that way. But they can't do, hey, that's a Christian. Why? Because the skirt level is going, is going above the knee just like the other girls. It's because some of those guys, you know, they just have the length of hair up to here just like the other guys out there. And then you can't tell nowadays from a liberal Berkeley student from a Calvary Chapel Christian who has long hair like this and playing guitar. Wow. We believe that it should be apparent that we're different from the world, that we're separated from the world, and that people can clearly tell that guy's a Christian. Wow. Amen. That's why we believe in right dressing, right relationship, how a boy should uh, get along with the girl and that there should be boundaries. Amen. That's why we believe in no contemporary music. I don't care if you don't like Brent's playing, all right? I think it's awesome. I don't care. I'd sooner have that than have him beat a drum set. I'd sooner kill myself than to see Brent play a drum set for us. Yeah, amen, brother. Amen. You better say <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> brother, that's right. It is important that, hey, the beat that we have is not their beat. Our rock, as the book, book of Deuteronomy says, is not their rock. Oh, no, no, they love Jesus. They worship Jesus. Yeah, okay, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt. They love Jesus, they worship Jesus, and they think they are, but I guarantee you this. Just, this is very easy. I never said lyrics, I said music. Yeah. I said I'm against their music, not their lyrics. Yeah. Just drop the lyric, and let's see if you can tell their music is different from Justin Gay Bieber. <laughs> I, w I double dare you. I triple dare you. I'm going to put 200 songs. I guarantee you this. You're going to make a lot of mistakes and you can't tell which one's the world and which one is Christian. You think Hillsong is spiritual? Put that next to Taylor Swift. Let's see how spiritual it sounds. We believe in distinguishing. That's a foundation. That's a basic. And if you're going to say, hey, I'm a Bible believer, I want that soul to salvation, and then look at your dressing in street Preach. preaching, in visitation. Where were you when I laid the foundations, God said? Adam, where art thou? Oh, yeah, I worship Jesus. I praise him all the time through my trials. And here you go with that contemporary music. Oh, it's not heavy metal. It's like jazz or like light rock or pop. And it has good stuff about Jesus. Encourage me through my trial. Come on. Hey, Adam. Yeah, come on. Adam, where art thou? Or maybe third Adam, right, sister, maybe? Third Adam after that? Producing their own God, their own kind of mindset. Yeah, come on. Fourth point. I'm getting very popular today. Okay. Yeah, come on. 1 Timothy chapter 6. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Thank you, brother. Thank you. 1 Timothy chapter 6. I, I told you, I know how to build a big church. All right? I, in, with all the odds stacked up against me, especially in this area, I could use even one more person in this church. But then I rejected the foundation of what God has given to me. When I started from the bottom, I started rock bottom. And God says, do it right. I'm going to waste 12 years of my ministry if I don't do it right. I started from the bottom. I'm going to make sure that's done right. I'm not going to waste 12 years of pastoring a church where it burns to ashes at the judgment seat of Christ. I must build a foundation. And by the way, it's... That's my conviction, but your conviction is different. It should be you 
That's why you attend this church. That's why you serve God. You got to check your foundations and see what is it I need to fix. Otherwise, you just wasted your years, years into this church, and you're going to blame me at the judgment seat of Christ. And you're going to say, Pastor, you never told me about that. First Timothy chapter 6, verse 18 through 19. The Bible says that they do good, that they be rich in good works, ready to distribute, willing to communicate, laying up in store for themselves a good foundation against the time to come. Notice that Paul says one of the basic foundations is to help others. That's the bottom line. You know, people... You are thinking, well, yeah, I come to church, you know. I love God. I sing along with the people. Hey, when's that last time you signed up that volunteer sheet? That's a foundation. A church is not just you come and you go. A church is I want to help the body of Christ. Where were you when God says, I laid the foundations? Where is that? Hey, I'm willing to preach and teach, pastor. Oh, you think pastor's going to have to do it for you? You think other people have to do it for you? Why don't you try to feed the sheep now instead of being that spoiled sheep getting all the food? Why don't you say it's about time that I help the brethren? And I'm going to preach and teach the word of God to them. Pastor, train me. Well, I'm a woman, so I can't do that. Well, hey, you ladies, you can minister to other women. Don't be a selfish sheep and just say, bah, give me food. And then you don't help out other people. Mm -hmm. You're helping us really Yeah. Preach, preach, preach. How about the music? Some of you have a talent and a gift and money. But you hoarded it all to yourself and you never used it to help other people. Wow. All of you are gifted in something. Even one of our brothers who just, the toilet, even something like the toilet or something disgusting like that, Helped the church so much when we had that plumbing issue. Amen. Instead of that brother, you know, just thinking that I don't have to do anything or stuff like that. No, we need someone. Every hand on deck, we need everybody. You need to help the pastor. You know how you can help out? Well, there's nothing I can do. I'm too old and I don't have anything that I can do and I'm just too sick. And Why don't you say, brother, sister, I prayed for you yeah. yesterday. Or are you too selfish that you keep asking, please pray for me, please pray for me? Hey, where were you, God says, when I laid the foundations? Adam, Adam, where art thou? Here's the pastor working his tail out. Some of your brother and sister in Christ in the war pits, and they're bleeding, and they're doing every ounce of energy to help out. And here they are helping you out, fighting for you. And here you are going like this, whining about your own problems in life and stuff. And please pray for me and help me out on this. And then, hey, where are you? Adam, Adam, where art thou? Good Ephesians 2, Ephesians 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 20. Ephesians chapter 2. And verse 20. The Bible shows that Jesus Christ is our foundation. Not the Pope. Amen? Amen. All right. It's not man. It's not, a, it's not the apostles. It's not the Pope. It's Jesus Christ. He's the foundation. However, built upon that same foundation is ministers. Amen. It's important. The basic foundation is not to be critical and a rogue rebel like a typical onliner would, nitpicking everything of a pastor or a Bible believer, when's the last time you submitted under a leader and tried to follow and to grow? You might say, why should I do that? Then why would God bother giving you a pastor? I mean, you're your own man, you're your own woman, so why don't just you and the Lord, why would God bother sending out a pastor? So you can listen. So you can grow. That's a foundation. I don't care how much of a Bible believer you say, yeah. and I don't care how many subscribers you have online or how many people look up to you, or even if you're a pastor yourself. Because guess what? This pastor, don't think that he knows all that. He tries to follow what other pastors do. I'm not a rogue like you. That's good. 
That's important. No man is above himself. Everyone is under a learning position. Yeah, yeah. Still learning. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 20. And are built upon the foundation of the apostles. Oh, is that what it said? Yeah. And prophets. See, ministry leaders, teachers. Mm -hmm. yep. Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto a holy temple in the Lord. You don't have to turn there, but you can write it down if you want. 1 Corinthians 12, 27 through 28. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 27 through 28. It shows the apostles mentioned, but it includes their teachers. That's the building framework that God set first. And then he mentions out the teachers. Apostles are long gone, but we got teachers. More than ever today, we need teachers. Some people might go, well, who do you think you are? I mean, I, I, think, I, I think differently. Hey, where were you? And God says, I laid the foundation. You think you're the roof. You think that you're on top. No, 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 foundation. You forgot your bottom. Well, you're not the pastor. You can't tell me what to do. Hey, is that person a teacher of a ministry that the pastor entrusted to take care of for him because he's just too stressed out and he can't lead everything? Who do you think you are, brother? Who do you think you are, sister? Hey, where were you when I laid the... Otherwise, pastor won't even bother having teachers for him. Why? He needs to build that foundation. I don't care how young the person is, how different the person's culture is, or if their personality is different from you, or even if you disagree with them, the Lord laid a foundation there, and he's teaching you how to submit the only time you don't submit is when they tell you plainly to sin or plainly do something that's doctrinally wrong. That's it. But everything else, you need to learn to submit and to follow and listen. Why? Because then you're that generation who will only believe himself or herself and can't trust anything and anybody nowadays. And then let's see how well you fare after that, trusting your own flesh rather than people who experienced the pain that you don't have to go through. Yeah, come on. That's right. Woo! Amen. When you're thinking about, man, San Jose Bible Baptist Church, we're going to do a great work for the Lord. Praise the Lord for all those souls saved. Hey, 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 man. You're looking at the top again. We joined this pulpit for power and popularity. A lot of majority should know by now, from what I went through, it costed pain. And I mean pain to the point of quit thinking about quitting so many times. What did you think when you got involved with starting a marriage home? When you thought about starting to produce kids? You thinking about all that top stuff, what you're going to do for the Lord together. You don't think about counting the cost. Wow. And pain. Yeah. Oh yeah, I can lead a group of people on what? It costs pain to lead a group of people if you're going to be a ministry leader. Wow. Luke 14, verse 28. Intending to build a tower, sitteth not down first, and counteth the cost, whether he have sufficient to finish it, lest happily after he hath laid the foundation. But then guess what? Oh, people don't come to church. Oh, it's too hard. And I don't think I can come to church today because it's so difficult. See, when you lay that foundation, and is not able to finish it, all that behold it begin to mock him. There goes the devil, your lost family members of the world. Ha ha, see, I told you so. Why did you go to that church? Ha ha, see, I told you so. Why, weren't, uh, why did you do these stupid things at that church? I told you that was a cult. I told you you should have drank and partied along with me. You don't count the cost when you're involved in a Bible-believing church. When you do start something for the Lord. Zechariah 4. Zechariah chapter 4. Wow. Zechariah chapter 4 verse 9. Praise the Lord for souls got saved. Praise the Lord that people got right with God. Man, what a great blowout. And hey, 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 Adam, Adam. Health problem. Car wreck. Church splits, problems inside the church, money running out. Adam, where art thou? 
Where were you when I laid the foundations? Zechariah chapter 4, and we'll read verse 9. Another thing that we forget about our foundation is the small things. Small things. We're, our Bible believers, we're so obsessed with, that's right, man, we reach so many people around the world through our online ministry. Man, praise the Lord that we got these kind of big name speakers inside our church. Man, praise the Lord that we got eight men who can preach for us. Man, we got a great teaching and preaching. All these fruits, look at it. our membership. It's going high and so many people visiting church. So many souls got saved and then, hey, hey, where were you when I laid the foundations? Oh man, today is Sunday. It turned out there were only three people at church. Oh man, no matter how hard I sow win, no one got saved. I, don't, I think that I should stop sow winning. Oh, hey, you know, I pour out my heart to build this work in this ministry, to help out the pastor of this ministry. I don't get any credit. I don't get anybody recognizing my effort. Or people don't even see the effort that I've done. Hey, where were you when I laid the foundations? Adam, where art thou? High up in the clouds, right, with soul saved, fruits and great ministry, a good blowout, good revival meeting. When this revival meeting comes up, why don't you think about the small things that are necessary? What? Sign up the sheet. Bringing food. Oh, those are small things, and that's right. Small things is what produces a revival meeting. Oh, pastor, you know, he's talking about cleaning up this and setting up this and stuff like that. Hey, small, petty, annoying things. Why does he want me come early to church? You know, I mean, it's not a big deal. And small things. Make 30-minute earlier effort. We could use every helping hand. Small, small, small. That's a foundation. Don't expect... Let me tell you this. Don't expect God to bless our ministry if you're always going to remain as you are and don't embrace the small thing. Wow. Never, ever expect God to bless our church. Zechariah chapter 4, verse 9. The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this house. Verse 10. What does he call that foundation? For who hath despised the day of small things? That's how it became a great temple. My last point is Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. Isaiah 58. My last point the foundation, this is extremely dangerous. I want you to hear this one, okay? This is the problem with a lot of pastors. There are people who poured their heart and soul into a ministry, got so many souls saved, and done so much work for the Lord. They sacrificed everything, even the mission field in their lives for the Lord Jesus Christ. And these became giants in the Great Awakening revival. Giants of famous Christian heroes we heard. But when I read some of their lives, not all of them, okay? Some, just some, all right? But when I read some of their lives, I see that they were so obsessed into building a great work for the Lord, they yeah. ignored their own household. Yeah. And you'll see oh. those, those children growing up to be bitter and messed up. The wife who uh, ran away from the husband or the people, uh, it's just a big, huge mess. Yeah with some of those people. Did God use them? Yeah, God will use anybody, anything, even yeah. if you messed up, God will use it. But God forbid that you want God to use you when you're messed up rather than when you're doing what's right. Amen. That's a foundation. But I helped out the church. I preached on the pulpit. I played music. I sang a special. I taught a group and... Hey, hey, hey. Uh, the church, ministry. See, you're thinking about the roof again. What about your foundation? Your own children? Your own spouse? Your own house? You're so good at cleaning up the church so well, but your house is a big, flat-footed mess. 
You want me to give you a bigger evidence? First Timothy mentioned this. I can't become a pastor if, because why? If I lose control of my house. How's your household, huh? You in control? You a good testimony? Foundation, foundation, basic. I don't care how much doctrine you know. Where is your home right now? No different from a lost person's home. Fight the same way they fight. Act the same way they act. Worldly the same way they act worldly. And when you come to church, you're spiritual and you're right with God. And you're a dispensational King James only Bible believer. Good for you. Isaiah 58 verse 12 says, And they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Thou shalt raise up the foundations of what? Many generations. You know what my fear is? I told this church already. My number one priority in the ministry right now is our kids. Why? I get a lot of people fired up right with the Lord, but God forbid it's stuck in this generation. And then these kids grow up in an environment where we're our own generation serving the Lord and we ignore this generation. And this generation seeks after the generation of the world and messes up their lives. We need to bring them up with them. Amen. We need to ha pick them up with us. Sing and shout along with us when we praise the Lord. Have a desire to talk about the Bible and the things of the Lord. Have the same hatred and sarcasm of the worldly things of this life. Oh, I don't think your child should raise that way. No, I think we should raise them that way. Make them poke fun at the world. What the TV garbage that they watch. Amen. Boo Santa Claus and then cheer three cheers for Jesus. Oh, I don't think ch children should be raised that way. No, we should raise them that way. Amen. We should raise them to poke fun at some clown who the person thinks I'm a boy when the person is a girl. And then the person goes, oh, you know, this is a wonderful lifestyle. We should raise our kids to think That's, that is insane and that is weird. You're a clown. Yeah. yeah, we should raise our children that way. Amen. The next generation Amen. that way. Amen. We need to pass along something of what we have to them. Hey, when you teach the Sunday school class, is that what you're doing? Don't bring the kids to your level of like, oh, where I'm at, you know, for the Lord. No, no, go down to their level where they're at. You need to go down to their level and seek over there why is it they have no interest in the things of the Lord. And once you find those issues, you need to preach against that. And you need to give them a motivation out of that. To have a motivation for the Lord. You know, the saddest thing. Do you know how, I, how we can build up the gold of, man, we finally got a church building. How we can build up the gold with, man, our San Jose Bible Baptist Church has led over a thousand souls to salvation. How are you going to build up the gold of, man, these people are soul winners in that church. A third of the people can win, win souls to Christ. How are you going to build up a work where, man, San Jose Bible Baptist Church, it's not big, but man, they already got eight people who can preach and teach that book on the pulpit. How are you going to get a church that, I mean, San Jose Bible Baptist Church can build all the gold of that, but it cannot build the gold without, at 1 Corinthians chapter 3, now, if any man build upon this foundation gold, yeah. silver, precious stones, what's that foundation? Jesus Christ. Amen. And he gave you in a foundation. And God forbid you wear a t-shirt that says real Bible believer and you're so far away of a Bible believer as you are because you don't even know the basics. Wow. Let's remember our first, first love. Every eye bow and every eye shut. The altar call is open. I'm going to have the piano play. The piano will play the same song over and over until, it's, until we finish. You got to check your life. Well, what is your lifestyle, your actions, how you appear to others, your testimony? And, you know, do you get, did you get your foundations right? What's your foundation? Can you hear the Holy Spirit calling you? Adam, 
Adam, where art thou, Adam? Winning souls to Christ. Adam, you're so far away, I can't see you. Where were you when I laid the foundation? Got to go back to your household. Got to take care of your home. Adam, where art thou? Man, this is such deep doctrine that I learned from Dr. Gene Kim. And man, no other pastor taught me this. And man, this is such deep stuff. I'm going to find out more stuff. Adam, where art thou? Do you even know the nine fruits of the Spirit, Adam? Do you know at least three verses on how to get a soul saved? Adam, where art thou? Where were you when I laid the foundation? Adam, where art thou? Man, I'm teaching the women. I'm teaching the children. I, I'm actually preaching and teaching to the whole church while pastor is gone. Man, I worked so hard in the outline. I'm doing all that. Adam, where art thou? You're still messing up with the world out there. You got some sin problems there. You don't look like a Bible believer. Where were you when I laid the foundation? Adam, Adam, where art thou? God, I put all my heart and soul into the ministry. I sacrificed everything for you. And man, it's so hard. I keep pushing and pushing, but it's so difficult, Jesus. Oh, I'm crying in tears and I got to quit this and I got to quit that ministry. It's too much. And Adam, did you count the cost? Didn't I say that you got to take up your cross and follow me? That the trial is necessary to produce the fruit? Where were you when I laid the foundation? Adam, where art thou? Adam, where art thou, Adam? Man, I'm so busy helping out the church right here. I'm doing the kitchen, cleaning the church, and helping pastor with security, and remodeling the place, and doing so many great things. And yeah, man, I've learned so much doctrine. I'm glad to be a real Bible believer. Adam, where art thou? You're not even saved. You didn't even get baptized. You didn't get the first, the first two things right to become a Christian. You need to get saved, then you need to get baptized. Adam, where were you when I laid the foundations? Adam, Adam, where art thou, Adam? Where are you right now? Look at the position you are in right now. Where are you? Did you get so lost in that busyness, in that personal pain of yours? so lost in that that you forgot the basics the basics of what God expects expects from his children let us now as real Bible believers if we're gonna be truly real build upon a foundation let us build a great work for the Lord but we can only hit the roof if we get the foundation right how long, do you realize how long the foundation was for this church before we hit the roof? Seven years. Seven years of pain, hurt. I didn't even teach the deep stuff. I was teaching basic doctrines, what you learn from one by one. Seven years. Seven years. That's what created our church what created this church the foundation of someone else your fellow brother and sister in Christ because they contributed a part even if it's a small part of here pastor let me put a brick with you on this foundation Is your foundation on shifting sand 
or on the solid rock. Let's close with a word of prayer. Father God, you've given us a strong foundation. That foundation is a solid rock. Lasted 2,000 years of persecution, of apostasy, and the world attacking Christianity, and sin rising. How amazing is that foundation? God, help us not to depart from that foundation, to stick to the foundation, Lord. To not grow, build so big of a house that we forget that, hey, my foundation is sand. It's time to clear this sand off and put it on the rock. Lord, be our foundation of San Jose Bible Baptist Church so that we can represent you the right way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen.